Right, for more on the yuan's movements, we're joined by Sung Won Son, professor of economics at California State University. Professor Son, thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Yeah, thank you. So, Professor, China is now measuring the yuan against a basket of 13 currencies rather than just the dollar. Of course, the dollar is still included. It does have the heaviest weighting in the index, the weighting being based on the trade volume with China. It's a big step. What is the significance of this move? I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, China's uh, investment and trade are with uh, 13 and more countries. U.S. is actually a smaller portion of the total pie. As a result, uh, expanding the basket to 13 countries, I think that makes a lot more sense. After all, uh, Chinese investments and uh, trade, uh, they go up and, up, up and down in terms of a Chinese renminbi, depending on what happens to individual currency. So I think it's uh, being realistic, and I think it's a step in the right direction. Well, this also serves to loosen the peg to the U.S. dollar. And uh, the timing is interesting. I mean, this is coming uh, days before the U.S. Federal Reserve is set to raise rates, is expected to raise rates, which, of course, would strengthen the dollar. Many say the timing here is not a coincidence. What do you think? Well, I think it is tied to the lift up by the uh, Federal Reserve. Uh, now, we know the central bank will raise the interest rate. In order to maintain the U.S. dollar renminbi peg, then People's Bank of China would have to buy RMBs in the marketplace to maintain that peg. But then that means uh, liquidity would be declining and interest rates in China would have to rise, which is quite contrary to what it has been trying to do. So that's one of the reasons why I think it is now resorting to a basket approach as opposed to single currency U.S. Uh, renminbi uh, peg. So I think uh, uh, this is a really the, a step in the right direction. And then in the future, we will see more flexibility in the uh, Chinese currency against the basket. So I don't think we should be simply looking at the dollar U.S. peg uh, uh, in the future. Well, whilst we perhaps shouldn't be looking at the dollar U.S. peg in the future, at the moment, the dollar yuan rate is, in fact, at its lowest since July of 2011. That is a four and a half year low. What are the main factors here? Is it because it's now moved towards this basket of currencies measuring system? Well, that is uh, one of the reasons, but I think there are some good fundamental economic reasons for that. Two economies are diverging. The U.S. economy is doing reasonably, reasonably well, and that's one of the reasons why the central bank tomorrow will hike the interest rates uh, most likely, whereas the uh, Chinese economy is uh, below expectations. So when two economies diverge, you would expect uh, one currency, in this case the U.S. dollar, to appreciate and the other currency, the Chinese renminbi, to depreciate. So uh, aside from this uh, peg that we've had in the past, uh, in the new system tying it to a basket of a currency, it will allow uh, Chinese RMB to depreciate and then U.S. dollar to appreciate more naturally. And I think that this makes a lot of sense, and that's what economic theory would dictate. Well, you know, Professor, speaking of uh, basket currencies, uh, there has been a lot of developments with the yuan. Very recently, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, approved adding the yuan as a global reserve currency. It's added it to the special drawing rights basket that should take place from next year. Well, how is all of this factoring in with the yuan's movement and its weakening? Well, I don't think it has a, uh, a, a, a significant influence. Uh, uh, first of all, the fact that IMF has added uh, RMB to its uh, uh, currency, SDR basket uh, uh, currency, is an indication that RMB has become a very, very important trading currency, investment currency around the world. So again, it's the uh, recognition of the fact. The other thing is that, of course, uh, it gives more prestige to the Chinese economy and the Chinese currency. And I think it is uh, also possible that uh, in the future we might see more central banks adding RMB to their uh, reserves. But as far as uh, the well, IMF is concerned, uh, the fact that uh, the People's Bank of China is allowing more flexibility, I think that is a good sign that is, again, a step in the right direction. Well, in, in the meantime, we do have that weaker yuan. On the one hand, some say this is good for China. It makes exports more competitive. On the other hand, um, does a weaker yuan erode confidence and uh, reduce purchasing power and investments and increase capital outflows? What is the ideal range for the yuan against the dollar from China's perspective? 
Well, the ideal rate is whatever the market dictates. Uh, it is true that if we see unusual uh, volatility in the exchange rate uh, regarding uh, RMB, the yuan, uh, then we might see confidence being eroded, and then we could see more uh, currencies flowing out of the country. And that's one of the things the Chinese government, PBOC, is concerned about. And that's one of the reasons why, even though the government will allow the currency to depreciate consistent with economic uh, fundamentals, I think it will intervene to make sure that it doesn't uh, produce undue volatility. Uh, if we have undue volatility, that would be a bad news, and then that could uh, promote, uh, uh, encourage more uh, currencies from leaving uh, China. But I think a smooth decline, uh, uh, that, that is not, uh, not a problem. And I think most people are expecting that, and that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. why some people have decided to take the currency overseas. All right. Thank you for your insight. We're going to have to leave it there. Professor of Economics at California State University, Song Wonson.